Uh, hi everyone, I want to see if you want to attend this, this talk about uh, how do you plot uh, and, and, uh, uh, a virtual desktop infrastructure in our school. Uh, we are, uh, my name is Jose Maria and I'm Dr. Rath, it's here. Uh, we, we are two teachers at uh, Flaggit Secondary School in Barcelona. Uh, we have uh, over 1,000 computers uh, that we have to, to, to maintain. Uh, and we usually uh, did a cloning system. But as, as we saw the virtual desktop uh, systems, we tried to uh, we tried some systems, and in the end, we, we developed uh, our own system that adapted exactly to the needs. Uh, what we will be uh, uh, explaining in this talk, uh, first of all, is uh, what what is uh, this, this server, ISART VDI, and the key concepts of what uh, which, which things we, we improve with the software at uh, different levels and also how we, how we solved uh, all the problems that we had uh, during these past years while, while uh, using these, these virtual desktops in, in our, our school. Uh, we'll talk about the storage and things about the storage uh, or hypervisors. How is that VDI uh, tries to optimize the, the desktops, where they run, and how, how uh, it decides where it's better to run? Uh, networking, client builds, so the, the, the users of the system connects to, to that VDI, and how this system scaled from the beginning. Uh, so, an example of how the system can, can, can grow in your organization. Uh, so it's an open source virtual desktops. Uh, we are focused on, on desktops, providing desktops, not servers. Uh, of course, you can run servers with the software. And we, but we need a, a fast and easy interface uh, that allow all users, uh, especially the, the teachers, to create, uh, to be autonomous, creating the, the desktops, uh, installing the software, uh, and then delivering all the software, uh, this, this created templates, we call it templates, to the, the students. Uh, we need to uh, use the interface that was quick, and also that, uh, that could uh, uh, be used by all the, the users in in our organization. Uh, we have an interface for the users where they create, they add new desktops, and they, they can start with uh, access to the client viewer. And we have also a code system. Uh, we can limit the number of desktops they can, uh, they can start, they can create. Also, we have a Another part, this administration part, where we can access all the rest of the users, hypervisors, and monitor uh, all the system. Why? Why we, we created Isart uh, uh, VDI? Uh, well, the philosophy was a little bit what I explained. Uh, we need a system that brings autonomy to our teachers and also to our students. So uh, we didn't want uh, the IT staff in our school. We didn't want to spend more time uh, delivering the, the software to, to the classrooms. Uh, and we mm, tried all of all the virtualization systems and didn't adapt a uh, specific interface to to what, what we needed. So we will start with an example that maybe will explain what's the typical use case. The teacher usually comes with uh, a software, the new software they have for uh, an ARM robot uh, they have uh, just bought, and 
they need to, to install it, test it and then deploy it to switch to computers mm, to rules. So uh, now the philosophy has changed. We say, yeah, okay, uh, just go to a large web, install it. Uh, so we provide uh, uh, a form where uh, on that where they <coughs> they can choose from templates already created. Uh, we create and optimize some, some templates. We call it uh, the base templates, uh, where they can uh, start a new desktop. Uh, they choose whatever uh, base template they want, or maybe templates that all teachers have created, and they can choose also. Uh, the hardware, uh, VLAN, they can attach the desktop to the VLAN where they are going to use it, for example. And after he has created the, the desktop and installed all the software they want, uh, they, they want to deploy that to the students, so uh, what we told them is, uh, okay, uh, just convert uh, your desktop to uh, complete and make it public to all the users. So when uh, he goes to class, he says to their students, OK, uh, create, uh, set, uh, look for my, my template, and create uh, the desktop. And immediately the, the students have, have the desktops. This is a really fast, uh, really fast sequence. Uh, how it works uh, at the level of uh, the, the disks, the disks uh, we use. Uh, we create the base uh, systems and optimize it. Uh, the teacher uh, creates a desktop, installs the software we want to use in the class, and converts this to a template. So, uh, basis and templates uh, are kept with good only. And after that, the users just create a desktop, and all the data they, they, they write on the disk go to, to the disks they uh, attach to the desktop. So, this system is growing itself as users are creating templates and new desktops. Uh, this is a view from Isaac BVI where uh, we can see the large tree of, of the uh, disks, how, how they are going. What we use is uh, uh, a chain of disks. Well, with with QEMO image, uh, you can uh, uh, derivate a disk from one disk and you can continue so on. So, with this system, we uh, we have, for example, more than 2,000 uh, virtual desktops uh, in only 8 terabytes, uh, eight terabytes of hard disk. So uh, one of the things that with this RBI we, we have is uh, a little bit only of, of the space uh, wasted uh, using this, these chains. Also, uh, RBI has the ability to you can uh, configure it, uh, you, you can set up uh, uh, ISAR BDI to set the disks, the, the user's disks, on different uh, storage servers. Uh, so the IO performance, that it's critical in this, the systems, uh, gets improved. It will balance the disks uh, based on, on weights you can set. So, with this system, we have uh, lowered uh, this budget. Uh, we have balanced tasks so, uh, that we can set in different uh, servers, so uh, we have better I.O. performance. And uh, mm, it's, uh, the disk are, are files, are TKO files, so you can just store it wherever you want and share it on the network with whatever system uh, you want. We use uh, uh, NFS4 as the sharing system between hypervisors and, and uh, storage, but you can use whatever you want. 
Uh, and the other, the other thing that we use to lower budget is uh, this cash. This cash uh, we have tried to uh, in Science IO and the M right boost. The first one is uh, currently unmaintained, and we have changed to the M right boost. Uh, we have um, rotational disks that are slow, and we have and the NI uh, disks really fast, but they are quite expensive. Uh, so we buy the cheapest ones uh, in size, the, the smallest ones, and we uh, configure the DM write boss to uh, write all the, all the desktops right to these uh, quick disks. And uh, you can see it here. Here, there is the impact of writes of multiple desktops. And uh, after that, in blue, you can see how the, the, cache, the cache is uh, laying the, the disk down to rotational, rotational disk. So uh, we can lower the, the budget also using this, this system. OK, uh, how Isart PDI controls the the, the hypervisors. We use generic KVM uh, hypervisor. Uh, you can find it in main distributions. So there is no specific uh, software needed to be installed apart from the, the main uh, KVM packages. And we do all the monitoring from uh, ISAR software through uh, SSH uh, on, all the, on all the hypervisors. So it's quite simple to set up. One thing uh, is that uh, we have tried with uh, Intel server boards and these expensive boards, but uh, in the end, we have seen, uh, we have seen that uh, if you balance the costs uh, performance of these boards, uh, using more uh, commercial boards uh, as hypervisors, uh, you get a better performance uh, system than using only uh, small ones, uh, sorry, uh, using high-end uh, main boards with uh, a lot of features that are uh, really costly. So <coughs> uh, sometimes it's better that you have a farm of hypervisors better than uh, trying to buy a computer a server, an hypervisor with a lot of RAM, a lot of uh, CPUs. Uh, your, the cost will be too much for, for the performance you will get. So <coughs> we assemble uh, all the hardware ourselves. Uh, it's gaming, so you have lights everywhere, and LEDs. Uh, on the engine part of ISART, uh, we have a, an orchestrator that uh, will monitor all the time the hypervisors and, and, the, <coughs> and uh, the desktops that are going to be run on those uh, hypervisors. So, uh, this algorithm uh, has weights the, and will decide based on the free resources on the hypervisors and based on the resources needed for the next desktops that are going to be run, which is the best hypervisor uh, where to, to place the, this desktop. Well, uh, on the network part, uh, we started with uh, bonding with uh, Ethernet cards uh, of four ports, for example, and we set up uh, bonding to have four uh, gigabits. And uh, after that, we uh, start looking at uh, 10 gigabytes, uh, 10 gigabits uh, switch. Uh, one thing 
that we have seen in the past five years is that uh, you can get uh, quite low price uh, switches uh, on eBay, uh, second hand, uh, and they are rock solid. So it's a hardware part that you can buy second hand and you can lower a lot uh, the costs. Maybe three or four times the, the cost of the new switch. So we use uh, copper Ethernet uh, switches uh, and network cards and, and, and 10 gigabyte switches. Now we have both uh, 40 gigabit switch, also uh, second hand. And we set up all the networking with this uh, second hand uh, hardware. Well, another uh, thing that we have seen with our experience is that uh, you have to split uh, those three network streams and try not to mix that on interfaces because it will uh, get a, a bad user experience if you mix it. You have to, you have to uh, send video send video, uh, the client video, through one interface uh, and one network. Uh, the access to internet of these desktops, you have to split it, you have to use another interface to, to send it. And of course, uh, the, the storage part, you have to, uh, you need a, a, a SAN uh, network uh, apart from, from the others. Uh, what it happened in the beginning is that we had video network, uh, access to internet of the desktops mixed, and uh, users experience a lot of luck when traffic uh, on the internet of these desktops uh, were in, on the same interface. So this is the new 40 gigabytes, gigabit switch we have bought, and another 10 gigabyte switch that, that we have, and we split uh, storage, access to internet and video on those three, uh, three networks. Uh, what we're providing is a, is a BDI, it's multiple kinds of access. Uh, we try to bring uh, BIOT uh, access, so the user, uh, the students uh, are, are starting to bring the, their uh, laptops to, to school uh, and they can use the already created templates of the teachers uh, on, their, on their laptops uh, through the, the network access on, on the school. Uh, between all these viewers uh, with HTML5 uh, we use uh, uh, an iOS a Spice web client that we have adapted that works quite well for a normal use uh, and brings uh, access to a lot of uh, a lot of clients that have a, only a browser. Uh, with the Spice, uh, you need a client to be installed on, on, on the on the client computer, but uh, you will have a quite good performance and also some features like uh, transparent USB port on your desktop your virtual desktop. Uh, VNC uh, works quite well also and most of the operating systems already have a, a VNC uh, ready. And RDP to, to access uh, uh, other kind of um, win, uh, Windows clients. Uh, with the clients, client viewers, we have set up uh, uh, some computers uh, with uh, Raspberry as, as the client that they access all system and, and get uh, the, the desktop. And well, uh, it, it works quite well for a normal use if you try to do uh, graphics or uh, intense graphics, something like that. Of course, it doesn't work quite well. Uh, how, how it esc uh, escalates all the system, how it can uh, get bigger. Uh, here we started 
with uh, a system in one computer that we try with a few students and, and we try if the concept uh, could, could work. Uh, so you can have uh, a Nizar VDI uh, for personal use, um, all in one, in one computer, you set up uh, a Nizar VDI, uh, or even you can have a, a mobile uh, computer, you have a cube, uh, it's a, a mini ITX uh, mainboard with a Xeon uh, CPU and I think 64 gigabytes of RAM uh, with an access point and uh, direct 10G access uh, network. Uh, so uh, we, we can use this as a portable ISAT that we can set uh, quickly on, 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 a, on a new classroom. Uh, we have to, to install also on, on some uh, laptops just to, to, to show some demos of the, of the software. Uh, of course, you can have a setup of one, one computer only. Uh, the, the problem is that you only have one computer. If it broke, uh, you have nothing else. But we started like that. We had one computer for one class and uh, we use gigabyte, gigabit bonding of uh, the network connected to the classroom switch and they use it on, on that classroom. Uh, we have some pictures of the, we assemble, assemble all, the, all the computers uh, we have in the school. But of course uh, this has grown a lot. And uh, when when you you have a big infrastructure when you want to where you want to deliver uh, the, the virtual desktops, uh, you need to set up a cluster for reliability, uh, hypervisors, a lot of uh, a pool of hypervisors, and you have uh, you need uh, 10G copper Ethernet. Or fiber Ethernet uh, to bring all this traffic to, to your classrooms. Our solution, as we don't waste a lot of uh, uh, disk space with our desktops, uh, was to set up a DRVD between uh, two NAS servers uh, that have the, the, the hard disks. These uh, two servers keep uh, data synchronized uh, with the RVD. And uh, with ISART, we can, uh, as we said before, we, uh, we share the, the, the disks on both, uh, uh, on both servers. So the hypervisors will get this from both, uh, both NAS servers uh, and we get a better uh, I.O. performance when all the desktops are writing on the disk. Uh, and we set up also a Pismic uh, cluster uh, that um, brings us the, the, the possibility to uh, to fail one of the NASes and all the system will work with the other. All the services uh, will, uh, will go from one NAS to the other if, if something goes wrong. Goes wrong. Uh, and we use the, uh, of course, second-hand uh, network hardware to, to connect all these all this devices. More or less what we have now is something like that, where we have uh, those two NAS servers, uh, and uh, we have the, the hypervisors that will run the, the virtual, virtual desktops. And on, on clients, we have different, uh, different kind of, of access, uh, laptops, uh, raspberries, 
uh, we have the same kind of, of uh, clients and, and connections. Uh, also, to make it easy to, to install, we did uh, we did uh, uh, a Docker uh, setup. So we have a, a Git repository where uh, there is a server you can bring up and start CDI on your computer uh, in minutes uh, and try the, 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 the software uh, and its possibilities. Uh, what I have time, I think. What I will show you now, it's more or less uh, how it works uh, on a day-by-day -day basis. We have uh, the quotes. Um, each user has a limit on what he can create and run. Uh, so, for example, a teacher creates a teacher creates a desktop, sets a name. This is a real-time video, I think. Uh, and sets the hardware he wants to be set up on on that on that schedule. One thing that happens is that a lot of software of ARM robots and domotics and everything like that, the company uh, gives uh, Windows uh, software. We have uh, Linux uh, on the computers, uh, but they need to program that ARM robot. So uh, this is a solution with Spice. They can uh, just uh, do a transparent USB plug uh, on, the, uh, on the desktop. So the, the physical USB will be seen inside the virtual desktop. So the teacher just uh, downloads the software, install it on this newly created uh, desktop. This is real time, so it started so quick. The NVMe cache uh, works really well. The VM write both cache that we have uh, talked about, uh, about before. So he will install the, the software and after that, he converts it to, well, we open software just to see that the, that the desktop works quite quick. It's really fast. Also, the I.O. on disk is really fast. And after that, uh, this is the, the typical usage of the, of the teacher. He is installs the software that he wants to use with the students, and he tries that it works. And after that, he will convert it to a template. All this desktop based on a Windows that we have set up, he will convert it to a, a, to a template, and it can be derivated on, on other desktops. So it can be used by other teachers or other, <coughs> other students. Well, we shut down this desktop and uh, we just convert it to a template that will be seen by all the other users uh, in the school. So it's a really quick system that we needed for, for school, and we tried all the, all the softwares, and we couldn't find a system that was so quick in all this process, and that brings uh, the autonomy to the teacher and to the students to, to create their own, their own desktops with the software they, they want. Ah, yeah. Now, uh, uh, the student uh, in the class goes into his art, uh, and he will find the, the template. So he creates a desktop. This is a real-time video. There, is, there are no... We haven't cut the video. <coughs> uh, 
uh, we, the students have uh, uh, less work on, on running desktops and hardware and all that. And we can access the desktop through different, different client viewers. So, uh, if you have, thanks for your attention, and if you have any questions about. Yes? Uh, uh, <laughs> our wives could tell that better than, <laughs> than us. Uh, yeah, he asks uh, how long did it take for us to, to, to develop the software and also the settings of the hardware that is behind that. Uh, a lot of powers, of course. Uh, we like it. It was like a personal project that we wanted to try. Let's give a try. It, it's, it works with one computer. Uh, let's start more desktops. What happens? Uh, you have a lot of I.O. You have a problem. OK, let's look. Uh, we need uh, uh, better hard disks uh, with a faster speed in writing. Uh, we have an, an old budget. Then uh, we look, uh, we have cache disks, cache disks, so uh, we set up cache disks and we started growing that uh, from maybe four or five years. We have been setting up uh, all the system. What we have seen is that teachers that uh, discover this uh, software in the school, because we didn't promote this software in the school, when they discovered it, uh, it was like uh, talking between them, and it grew up. Uh, we, we couldn't stop that. Uh, it was uh, high demand of, of these desktops. Yeah, we have, you have an uh, LDIP. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, if I understand, uh, you are asking how do we map the users to the system? Yeah. We have an LDAP system. Uh, uh, we have three level. Uh, of uh, we have roles, we have uh, groups, we have categories in our LDAP uh, on the school uh, that was already set up. We just <coughs> uh, have a, a, a plug, like a kind of plugin, a script uh, that you can uh, set up for your LDAP uh, to s to automatically get the, the users from from your from your system. Also, you can create your users, local users, without any. Uh, Authentication system. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah? Uh, what about the location between the software and the system you use? Yeah. Yeah, That's, that is a big problem. Uh, what is the, the question was what about the licensing of uh, the software you are running inside this, uh, uh, these virtual desktops? Uh, it happens the same with all the systems you, uh, virtualization systems you, you drive. Uh, there are policy, Microsoft has his own, and uh, I think you are talking about Microsoft licensing. Uh, you have, you need a, a physical license to, and then you can run that license uh, on a virtual desktop, something like that. There is, there is like a, a uh, a problem of uh, licensing uh, virtual desktops, but this is the same in all the, all the systems. There is no other way to do it. You have to, you need the, the, the physical license of that virtual desktop. Any other questions? Yeah? 
uh, we are using, uh, sorry, uh, which version of uh, the RDD we are using on, in our system? Uh, we are using, I think it's version 8, and now there is version 9. Uh, version 8, you only have uh, two, two servers, uh, and we want to, when we have more time, we want to try a new, new version 9 that uh, it lets you uh, set up more servers tied together, but we haven't tried yet. Ah, yes. yeah, we tried Gluster uh, in the beginning of Gluster uh, as uh, a system that will let us grow. But the performance, I don't know now, but it was four or five years ago, the performance of the system was so low that we started looking for, for uh, cache, uh, cache disks and, and a system that didn't grow up in, in size of disks uh, a lot, so we, we started uh, developing our, our own system. Ah, uh, Thefs. <coughs> yeah, you need five servers, maybe, to set up a minimal In the beginning, we tried Gluster, and we saw, yeah, that uh, the performance was not so well. And uh, with thefts, we saw that uh, we need a lot of servers to set up the storage, uh, minimal storage. So uh, for us, it was cheaper, uh, this, this setup. So we, uh, in all the system, we tried to, to keep the budget low. I don't know if you can, maybe, you cannot see it so well. Uh, we monitor all the system, and uh, as you can see here, well, well this, these two peaks are the load of the NAS. When on top on there, you can see the hypervisor, uh, on the desktop started. So uh, it goes from um, five, six desktops to 60 desktops. I don't know the time, I don't remember, but in a few time you have a lot of uh, uh, desktops started. And what you get is a high load on, on, the, on the NAS, the storage, on the, on the storage. But uh, the cache system uh, in this small setup works so well, you, you can optimize it a lot. We have run uh, with six hypervisors, uh, sorry, uh, he asked if <coughs> If we have tried the system to the limits, yeah, of course, we like to do that uh, <laughs> during night and, and all that. And with six hypervisors, um, 64 gigabyte RAM, uh, uh, 128, uh, 12 cores, 24 cores mixed all together, uh, and, and gaming boards, most of them, we start 120, something like that, easily. And when the, when the problem in the classroom is that all the, all the, all the, students, all the students make the, the start at the same time. The teacher yeah. says, OK, start. And the, the cachet, it's, it's very, yeah, the problem is heavy, the, 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 the I.O. performance when the, when city or also, uh, when, when the teacher has created the template, what happens is that he's in a class of 25 students, and he says, OK, let's go to Isad VDI and create a template now. And you create 25 hard disks, uh, but with, uh, with this system, the, the hard disk, uh, it's, it's 200 kilobytes, I think, and it will grow up as the student uh, starts writing on, on the disk. So this process is not so consuming. Yes, in the, in the engine, we, we, we 
we, we have a, a queues. No. Queues. Yeah, queues. Yeah, we have queues of uh, operations, of operations. So we can control how this uh, behavior uh, goes. If it's so quick, we can uh, stop some stats and uh, delay it uh, a bit. Well, we, no one knows, uh, we don't know, but uh, it, it has been a, a, a software that uh, the teachers are demanding more and more. So uh, now we are trying to, to keep uh, an stability of all the system and, and as, it, as it is growing, because uh, you need more resources and everything uh, will, will grow. But, uh, uh, well, I don't know. Here, where where it will reach? Yeah. 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 The, uh, the commercial solutions, as you said, VMware and all, all you know all these uh, commercial solutions are really expensive. We ask also for twenty desktops, and it was like incredible and. The problem for us also was that uh, they say, okay, you have also to go to this company and buy, or you have to set up this storage like this and this, and the, 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 the costs uh, were uh, a lot higher. So it's not only the software, it's the hardware. They, they want to run the software. So we did it ourselves from ground up, all the hardware. We set up, the, we assembled the computers, we set up the switches uh, and uh, the network cards. Also, we, we tune the, the network cards, uh, the, the, the performance of the network cards, and, and, and we did the software as, as also the, the interfaces we have seen didn't have this, this speed in creating and converting desktops to templates. Any other questions? Okay, thanks for your attention.